When you visit the Facebook campus, you get the sense that anything is possible. We want the, the campus to feel like a little, like a little city or village. Right? And now Zuckerberg wants to make the entire world like the Facebook campus in a way by providing internet access to the entire world. The idea is called internet.org. Its target, the five billion people around the globe without access to the net. I mean, here we use things like Facebook to share news and um, catch up with our friends, but there, um, they're gonna use it to decide what kind of government they want, um, get access to healthcare for the first time ever, um, connect with family hundreds of miles away that they haven't seen in decades. Um, getting access to the internet is a really big deal. I think we're gonna be able to do it. And the word we is the key word here because this isn't just about Facebook. Zuckerberg has done something extraordinary to achieve the extraordinary reached out to the biggest players in social media and mobile data, a.k.a. his competitors in part, to work together. How did those calls go? Um, it probably varies. <laughs> um, but, I mean, in general, these are companies that we have deep relationships with and have worked with on a lot of things for a long time. So this, this just kind of came out of a lot of the discussions that we had. So a team of the best in the business is coming together. But for a task this size, uniting five times the global presence Facebook has already, it's going to take a lot more. What about the how? Like, how, how do you do this? Like, how developed is the plan? You know, we have a plan, a rough plan for what we think we're going to need to do to pull it off. And of course, the, the plan will evolve over time and we'll get better ideas. But, um, you know, if you look at the trends, I mean, data is becoming more available to people, right? Apps are getting more efficient to run. Um, there are new business models to help more people get online. It's also good for Facebook and these other companies, right? Mm -hmm. Because mobile access to the internet is where your business lies, right? You know, if we were just focused on, on making money, um, the the first billion people that we've connected have, have way more money than the rest of the next six billion combined. Um, it's not fair, but, but it's the way that it is. Um, and we just believe that everyone deserves to be connected and on the internet. So we were putting a lot of energy towards this. People see you as somewhat of a comeback kid right now. Forget about the kid part, but it's just <laughs> as a phrase, right? Um, that, you know, you took some lumps and you found a way to come back. Are you aware of that? Do you feel that in yourself that like, you know, some people thought it wasn't going to happen, you know, that you'd had your run, but look at me now. Do you, do you get a sense of that? Yeah. You know, we've always just focused on building something great over the long term, right? So everyone at Facebook, I, I just tell them, you know, come in and, and try to make the biggest impact that you can have. And if we keep building a service that people love and that more and more people use every day, which we, we seem to be doing pretty well at, um, then we're gonna be fine over time. And, and that's, that's our focus in terms of building the company. Hard to do though, when you hit the bumps in the road though, right? I mean, it's a great message when everything it's is It's especially okay. important when you hit the bumps. So when not trying to connect the world to the internet, you have to run one of the biggest companies. And when you want a distraction from that, you've decided to take on the easy task of immigration policy <laughs> in the United States. Why are you wading into those waters? When we were first talking about doing this, a lot of people actually were worried that it, that it was gonna be a problem for Facebook, right? And, and I just decided, I think that this is too important of an issue um, for the country. I mean, there are 11 million undocumented people who, who came here to, to work hard and contribute to the country. And, um, you know, it's, I don't think it's quite as polarized as, as people always say. What would be your advice to the people in D.C. who are trying to balance these two almost diametrically opposed positions? One is immigration policy is about what you're talking about. Let's bring in our human potential. And the other one is let's find a way to get them out. How, if you had to enter that, this is your new team. You have to make these Democrats and Republicans come together. What advice do you think you'd have that's not going on down there now? Well, I, it's, I can't really tell anyone how to legislate, right? I mean, that's, um, everyone understands this stuff way better than, than, than I do. So, you know, my goal in this is just to try to help support folks who care deeply about getting this done on, on both sides, and, um, and hopefully we can make a difference. In terms of the politics of it, you think it's just important enough where you're gonna do it anyway? Yeah, I mean, I think that there are some things in life that if you believe that it's such a big problem, you, you just stick your neck out and, and try to do it, right? And I mean, a lot of people think that it's gonna be really challenging to connect five billion people too. It is, um, but, but I think it's one of the biggest problems in, in, of my generation to, to get everyone in the world um, to have internet access. And I mean, similarly, you know, 11 million undocumented people 
I mean, that's a lot of people whose lives we can improve and make the country stronger. Good luck with everything. Thank You're you. You're not even 30 yet. You're doing great. <laughs> You're doing great. Good luck with everything.